الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم My dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته It has come to my attention that there are people and amongst them so-called students of knowledge in America who are spreading uh, some kind of misconceptions and doubts, shedding doubts around the scholars of Ahl Sunnah and of course this led to some kind of weakness in faith and weakness in abiding by the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by many, and I don't want to say a lot or something like that, because I am not there, but by many uh, Muslim brothers and sisters. First of all, I would like to remind myself and you of the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu alaykum anfusakum la yadurrukum man dalla idha ahtadaytum ila Allah marji'ukum jami'a fayunabbi'ukum bima kuntum ta'amalu In this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us in the name of faith. Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu. Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu. And one of the things about this statement is that you should pay attention. Prepare yourself for what's coming of talk after this statement as one of the companions said إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَرْعَوْ لَهَا آذَانَكُمْ When you hear يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Put your ears to the best of its attention Put your ears to the best of its attention And why he mentioned because what's coming is either something obligatory that you should pay attention to so that you, you can act upon or something haram so that you can pay attention to in order for you to avoid. Now what is the order that is coming? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ مَنْ ضَلَّ إِذَا اهْتَدَيْتُمْ Let not those who go astray harm you when you are on the right path. Let those who, who, who are misguided not take you to misguidance with them. When you are guided, when you are following the right thing, 
This verse, Ya ayuha alladhina amanu, la yadurrukum man dalla idha ahtadaytu. It means, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I'll, I'll, I'll recite the verse from the beginning again. يا أيها الذين آمنوا عليكم أنفسكم لا يضركم من ضل إذا اهتديتم O you who have faith take care of yourselves عليكم أنفسكم be minded about yourselves and then Allah سبحانه وتعالى said let not those who uh, choose misguidance harm you when you are guided when you are guided in other words the faithful should be strong he should not be weak he should not be shaky the least the least excuse he finds to do something haram he follows follows that excuse no matter how silly of a misconception it might be and therefore i would like to say that it came to my attention uh, through some of the brothers who live in the States that it has become kind of widespread in many communities of Muslims that they say that uh, the Muslim scholars uh, don't know our situation here and that they order us to do the th things and that they themselves don't abide by those things like sending their uh, kids to America to study and things like that. You must know my dear brothers and sisters that this is a very lame excuse and this is a very lame shubha or misconception and that the prophet of Allah the messenger of Allah Nuh alayhi salatu wassalam was one of the uh, five uppermost messengers of Allah and he was the first messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first uh, history wise. And one of the four, four, uh, five most high ranking messengers. His, his son, his son, his own son did not obey him. And not only did not obey him, but he was a mushrik. He was a mushrik, an idol worshipper. And some other messengers, Lut, alayhi salatu wassalam, his wife was a mushrik. So it's not always the case that when someone is very pious that his son or his close uh, relatives like his wife uh, are abiding by his orders and abiding by what he tells them and this is one thing the other thing is that when you know the truth about Allah and his messenger, you know something it is, uh, that it is true and your proof is a, a, a clear verse in which you know its meaning from the scholars. 
or a clear true hadith in which you know its authenticity and you know its meaning from the saying of the scholars also then the proof the, the truth has been established against you the truth has been established against you and if the proof if the if the proof has been established and the 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 uh, the uh, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the you have seen the truth clearly then you have no excuse if others go uh, against this proof they take uh, take on their own responsibility and you take on your own resp responsibility uh, the fact that some uh, some uh, so-called student of knowledge says that the scholars or scholars of al sunnah or he might say the salafi scholars or some of the salafi scholars uh, say something and do something else and things like that this is this is a way to turn people away from the truth and from the scholars and this is no less than what the takfiris do nowadays, the khawarij do nowadays, when they uh, try to accuse our scholars of being puppets and being uh, unknowledgeable about the current situation and things like that. And some of them go to higher extremes by saying our scholars are run by the tyrants and they they uh, things like that which make them if not innovators if not kafirs i'm sorry make them innovators because uh, the scholars of al sunnah agree that mocking the Sharia, the Book of Allah, and the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is great kufr. And anyone who mocks uh, any part of the Sharia, he is not a Muslim anymore, he is a kafir. This is agreed upon. And some scholars said, not only mocking the Sharia, but mocking the carriers of the Sharia is great kufr. So who, he who mocks a Muslim scholar, especially a Sunni scholar, a Salafi scholar, then he might fall, according to those scholars, under great kufr, and he might be out of Islam because of this kind of mockery. And the mockery takes many forms. It could be in the form of uh, direct mockery, it could be belittling, it could be uh, making it as a joke, but actually uh, hinting to a mockery. Any, any form of mockery is a mockery. And therefore, anyone who says anything which leads to uh, disrespecting our scholars then if he is not uh, completely out of Islam he is completely out of the Sunnah and Salafiyyah he is an innovator as uh, as Imam Ahmad rahimahullah mentioned about uh, Muawiyah radiallahu anh, and he was one of the later companions who became a Muslim after conquering Mecca 
and Muawiyah said, uh, he who says a word uh, regarding Muawiyah, meaning uh, belittling him or saying bad things about him, he is an innovator. He is an innovator. And of course, our scholars are not in the position of any companion, Muawiyah or any other companion, but they are still the carriers of the heritage of the companions and the carriers of the narrations about the companions. Therefore, they are our way to the companions. They are our way to the companion. So, regarding the so-called student of knowledge who speaks ill about the companions, I guarantee you that he has not even smelled the true knowledge. He might have went there and uh, gained some information from here and there, but no one who comes back from a Salafi university, for example, and attacks the Salafi scholars has actually gained any knowledge. He has not gained any knowledge. And uh, uh, only Allah knows what was he doing over there. Because uh, uh, we know people for sure who go there just for the degree. So that when they come back to their country, they are known to be graduates of the Salafi University in Medina. So they are ordered by the party which they are from to go there and to get the degree from that university in particular, in particular, to get the, the degree from there. They want to use that for certain uh, projects that they have in mind and not for the sake of letting this student come back and give da'wah to Salafiyya or teach Salafiyya. No. Because we know those so-called students, we know them. They are by the hundreds in our countries. In our country alone, they are, they are by the hundreds. And yet, none of them gives any da'wah to Tawheed or to the Salafiyya. None of them. Why? Because they are not ordered by their uh, affiliates, parties, whatever you call them, to do so. And because in the first place they did not go there so that they learn the truth and come back to spread it. And if this is true for our country here, then this is also true for your country. I know a lot of uh, convert Muslims who were intending to come back and to come to, uh, to a Muslim country to learn and then go back to their countries and be figureheads in their communities, show themselves as knowledgeable and show themselves as eligible to give fatwa and to make people follow them and things like that. We've seen a lot of them, I've seen at least a lot of them in America. And I've heard about a lot of them in Europe. 